Hi, this is Dana, and on this channel I speak about spiritual warfare. Um, I have another channel on which I speak about astrology, any other accounts or channels um, are not mine. The only one that, uh, uh, the only other social media account that I have is Facebook, on which I wrote the prophetic writings. Um, God has guided me to uh, come back to the previous topic and expand a little bit because uh, in the previous video I lumped together four different topics which each of them basically is very broad uh, so I didn't actually get to speak uh, enough about any of them uh, but it seems like this was God's plan um, and so he asked me to come back uh, and uh, discuss uh, the, the assignment, the couple assignment, right? On which uh, about which I, I talked a little bit in the previous video uh, and I showed uh, basically how God is giving an assignment for a couple to come together now this is a um, and of course you can accept it or not that's a different story um, and each decision has its consequences uh, but um, the entire process of assignment uh, of giving an assignment by God it's a little bit more broad than this and more diverse this is, was just one example in one specific case, uh, but it's much more uh, different. For example, you have the couples, the karmic couples, as they're called, couples which have met in previous lifetimes, and one of them or both of them created uh, karma against the other. Some have created negative karma by doing harm on the other one, uh, betraying the other one uh, to the darkness. Uh, some other people have done, have created positive karma by, um, <laughs> uh, in a very uh, slang uh, type of expression, I would say that they put up with the crap from the other one, basically, while they continue to stay in light. And this generated for them positive karma. Um, although the downside of it that is that if you took this approach, continue to be fair and to be uh, pure in the relation in spite of the harm done by the other, um, you do gain beneficity and you get strength and power in spiritual terms, but um, you also carry with you the wounds which the other one has created on you. You also carry with you uh, the claims by darkness which the other one created on you when he sent those darkness, that darkness to you regardless what type of darkness uh, he sent, because that is very diverse. It can be slander, it can be direct confrontation and aggression, it can be uh, uh, undermining your self-confidence, it can be blocking your path, stealing your rights, it can be many things, it can be cheating. Usually most all of these create uh, trauma and, and hurt, wounds, uh, and it, it inhibits... Uh, natural development of uh, your abilities and your ability uh, to continue your path, your spiritual path. So uh, if you come from this kind of background, of course you're going to have the strength and the positive karma. And these are usually the uh, ones we call healers, right? Which they focus mostly on healing themselves on the others, even if they don't consciously doing it. They're just doing it by reflex. Uh, but um, at the same time, they don't stand up for themselves. They don't fight for themselves. They don't put uh, strong boundaries in place um, and so on. And, and much of it is done by darkness, which has been projected at you by the other one or by others, which took advantage of, uh, of that. Uh, so that is another type of uh, assignment. The, the assignment for such a couple, when they meet in the current lifetime, is basically to break that karma. Now, of course, uh, if it, first of all, if it's a karmic situation, uh, you must know that this is a test for you. Because once, once you went in the divine realm, both of you faced each other and God, and each of you learned what the other one has done. Uh, if you came together uh, back uh, into incarnation, that means you agreed to clear that karma. Basically, what it means, you convinced the karmic board that you're, uh, you have good intentions to come and clear it. Unfortunately, many of them, when they come in 3D, they do the same thing all over again. 
in spite of the fact that while they were in 5D, they pleaded and begged uh, to be allowed to come to clear their karma and the harm they have created on others and so on. Of course, somebody who does this, which are many people, um, creates even more negative karma for himself. And um, uh, it basically that individual enslaves himself or herself to the force of darkness even more. So it, it's a m multiplying of the darkness with each repetition of the same situation, right? Um, so ideally, God, of course, and the divine realm uh, try to make sure before they allow for an incarnation to come into being that the individual is uh, honestly regretting what uh, he done uh, and is uh, determined to actually uh, do right by the other when they come. Another uh, consideration that is important in the decision process is that the darkness the two of them created weights down on their lineage or more lineages if they come from different lineage and it's a, a interracial uh, a marriage or couple. So um, obviously there on one hand is the concern for the two of them to heal and to assume their path, but it's also a consideration for the harm done to others around them due to the uh, darkness created. Okay, so um, this is a couple usually called karmic couple, which comes to clear the karma. You will meet that individual at a certain point in your, in your life. When it's this kind of situation, God will not warn you. And I emphasize this because I have met individuals who came towards me and wanted to, um, to be together. And I asked God uh, at that time, should I accept it or not? Because I had doubts. My instincts told me that that individual is not, uh, uh, doesn't have good intentions, right? But these are tests. If this is a continuation of what has happened in previous lifetimes, that is a test for you. And the divine realm cannot give you the answer because you are supposed to pass the test. You're supposed to, by then, you're supposed to have enough knowledge uh, uh, and enough uh, grasp of, on your abilities to actually protect yourself, to set boundaries, and to break free. And for the other one, to fight for himself, to uh, um, cast out the darkness which uh, he created in previous lifetimes and so on. So this is the karmic couple, which when the, you come together, it, you must understand, it doesn't mean that if you came together in 3D to clear the karma, it doesn't mean that you have to stay together. It means you just must meet to break uh, that karma, to break that bondage. Ideally, you do it together. Unfortunately, most times, the sit previous situation is repeating itself. Therefore, one of you, ideally, breaks the karma for the couple. So one of you breaks free from the other one uh, and claims justice, judgment, and punishment, and then the bondage is broken anyhow, regardless what the other one has done. If you have never been a couple before, but there are, and there are many situations like this, like I just gave the example in previous video where I was talking about an individual who claimed me for many years, although he never even said hello to me and he lives on the same street with me. I have many examples like this. This is a situation where you, I was never a couple with that individual. I was never a couple in no lifetime. I was a couple. So therefore, I um, basically the karma created is just the one he created against me without me even knowing, being unbeknownst to me. And every time I learned about what he created much later on, right? So in this situation, I'm not supposed to clear the karma together with that individual in such a situation. So you have many individuals in your life who created karma on you, uh, against you, without you and them being a couple. Now, in this lifetime, you have many opportunities, different situations uh, in which you can break karma with that individual. One situation, for example, and I have experienced that a lot in my spiritual uh, uh, path, uh, basically is that um, it's enough for me to cross paths with that individual and just claim justice, judgment, and punishment without even talking to him. And that is called that I delivered karma. Okay? 
because the divine realm knows uh, what that individual has done uh, against me. You can give that individual a chance uh, to be a couple. And this is the example I gave you. Uh, God uh, asked me after many years in which this individual created a darkness against me. God didn't tell me what he did. God only told me, I want you to accept to be with this individual in a couple um, because um, he's from the lineage and we stand uh, to do a lot of uh, good to um, our lineage and to the humankind if uh, the two of you actually uh, break this karma or which is, has been created between the two of you. And I accepted that. But then, of course, he rejected because he was very much aware of the harm he has done to me in this lifetime plus previous lifetimes, right? So he refused uh, on one hand because he was feeling guilty for what he has done. On the other hand, <clears throat> because the darkness which uh, took uh, a hold of him, of course, because all this karma he has created, he created with darkness, right? So uh, it became also an ego thing, you know? Um, and then again, but this is his problem. It's not my problem. I'm not supposed to deal with that. Uh, and I'm not supposed to take upon myself uh, the uh, darkness which he created. You know, that will be silly to say the least. So it's this kind of situation in which um, uh, there are specific um, strategic spiritual advantages for a the entire humankind or for an, an entire community for you know uh, and for which actually god will ask you like it was in my case directly or uh, just be with this individual also even if you would have accepted that wouldn't have meant that we had to be together for the lifetime the intention was that we come together to break the bondage and for him to break free from the darkness because in this circumstance, this individual was from my lineage. So for him, if he would have uh, come together and would have cleared uh, all that darkness which got a hold of him, then that would have been a tremendous help to the entire lineage because all of us in a, the lineage are burdened by the darkness which he brings. Right? Uh, so that still didn't mean that we have to stay together for the lifetime. But it did mean that we could have done specific spiritual work together to actually break all of this. Most probably each of us, especially since we are from the same lineage, would have had his or her own path uh, and her own, his own assignment from God to do other things in life. It was not necessarily uh, supposed to come together to stay together forever. Then this is something very important. I have said in my videos always, do not confuse the bondage breaking. Uh, when a couple comes together to do bondage breaking, it really doesn't mean that you're going to have to stay together for the lifetime. Really, because you don't come here in 3D to just enjoy yourself. You can choose that if you want, but it doesn't mean that you have to do this. Um, and specifically for the karmic couples that come together, um, you must know that uh, if a number of wounds were created on you, you will never fully develop. Even if you come together and you do agree, both of you, to work on the bondage breaking together, and you succeed to do that, I will tell you for sure, uh, it does not mean that uh, you have to stay together forever for the simple fact that there are some wounds which you will heal together, but some of them you will still have some sort of resentment towards the other. The one who has done harm will always feel guilty in face of the other one. Uh, the, one the, uh, the one that was harmed will always have some sort of um, uh, mistrust towards the other one. What if you betray me again? What if you make contracts on me again? And so on, right? Um, so it's, uh, of course, you want to do uh, deep healing, but you don't know, and I don't think even God maybe doesn't know exactly to what extent is possible such a deep healing uh, after a certain uh, uh, degree of harm has been done. Uh, it could be that you do not; it's not possible to heal completely to such extent that so you can actually develop yourself 
in um, uh, to your full potential, which is meant by God for you. So it could be that uh, it is better for the two of you to come together, break the bondage, and then whenever you're done with that, just move on. Just move on and develop and understand that this here is a temporary mission that you have in 3D to break bondage. And I'm pretty sure that you have more bondage to break than just one that situation with that individual. That is much more that you have to deal with, right? Okay, so there's a, another example uh, which I gave now. Um, you must understand that uh, it's a very broad practice, but, uh, specifically in 3D. This is how 3D was created, by stealing rights uh, from uh, those uh, from authentic lineage, uh, those with, which had divine rights, uh, and making fake claims on them, creating fake marriages uh, on them with other um, uh, individuals who are doppelgangers. This is why the stolen identity and the doppelgangers, the copycats, exist. Because the original copy, like me, for example, does not agree to do the kind of stupid shit these individuals want her to do. So then they create a doppelganger to do in my name what I do not agree to do. And they know fully that I would never agree to such things. Um, and by this way, uh, they also claim uh, me only to get my rights. That means my money. Literally, all of this you have to understand. It trickles down in 3D in material existence. <clears throat> when this individual uh, claimed me without even talking to me, ever, we never been face to face, talking to each other. He never said hello to me, and the other way around. I never said hello to him, I never spoke to him. But uh, he did this in order to claim my rights and to take my money. And also to block me, uh, much of the attacks which are uh, directed against me, are to block my, to block me, uh, in astral, so I cannot develop my abilities and my gifts uh, in order to do energy harvesting at me. And this is one of the main um, uh, issues uh, for the 3D uh, leadership, let's say, it, let's call it this way. They do energy harvesting on everyone, and this is why they make the claims, the fake claims, and the fake marriages. I, I already said in previous videos, when I started my spiritual fighting uh, in 2018, God has shown to me I was single, and I was single for many years, yeah? And God has shown to me that uh, there were 48 or 49 uh, fake marriages created on me and claims over my rights with individuals I've never met, or some of them I've, maybe I've seen on TV, but I never met in person, and they're politicians, actually, and, or some of them individuals with whom I did meet as co-workers, uh, or they had some leadership position in my institution, but I, there was nothing ever between them and me. They were married people. And let me tell you this, their wives are aware of this. They are part of the secret societies with their husbands, and they agree commonly because the, that couple doesn't have divine rights because God does not agree with that union. Uh, and they, the woman actually is the one who sends her husband. I was in shock when God showed me this. The woman sends her, the, her husband to claim another woman and do energy harvesting on her uh, in order to have her rights. It is mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing that a woman is capable of such a thing. And then they are the ones who actually uh, point the fingers and they don't understand why their spouses are cheating and so on. Because you do this, you send them in astral to different other women to harvest energy from them to get their rights. So in order to do this, to do this, you, uh, both of you go through rituals uh, and embrace certain type of uh, uh, darkness, uh, dark energy, dark uh, demons, actually, um, which uh, empower them to cloak themselves so we don't see them in astral, uh, to come during the uh, dream state uh, and harvest energy and uh, uh, also the harvesting energy can be done in many ways. One of them through aggression, through your so your sleep, but it, it can be done through different type of aggression. It can be 
uh, psychological abuse and verbal abuse. It can be sexual as well. Uh, it can be um, uh, trauma bonding by creating a specific trauma on you uh, of regarding your um, self-confidence and, and so on. Or fear. Uh, it can be trauma by fear, like, you know, all this. They, they actually create this fear uh, in your subconscious level during sleep time. Uh, by um, um, repeating continuously that you're going to lose your job, lose your husband, uh, or anything that you can fear of, actually. Uh, not receive money and so on. Um, now, this is, again, a very broad topic. But God has guided me to talk about it because most women, but let's go further. There are also men who are being claimed. This is why we have such a broad focus on uh, homosexuality, on lesbians, on, on so on. Because they, this is why this has been created. So they can use this as an excuse to claim men. There are women who do this and claim specific men. So you can be a man married with your wife and a crazy lunatic woman wants to claim you and she, if she's active in astral, she can actually come uh, during your sleep time, uh, during your your um, <clears throat> during your dream time, uh, and he she can pursue, you, including sexually in many ways, but including sexually, and she can claim you. So it's not just for women; it's for everybody. It's more common for women because the one uh, on men has been developed uh, later on, uh, but um, it's common for everyone. People are being claimed in many, many ways, um, and uh, without their knowledge. And these are couples, these are situations in which you are not a couple with somebody. However, they transfer to you their karma, all the karma they have been creating. And um, there are certain procedures in which they actually have in these secret societies a court of law, if you can imagine, and they can actually make their judgments on you. You don't even know what is going on. They go make a fake complaint about you and they make a, um, a judgment, basically, on you. I have seen um, so many situations of bondage breaking. God has shown to me so many that actually it's absolutely um, madness, literally madness. I have, God has shown me a woman who has sent her men to do harvesting of sexual energy from another woman who, who had no clue about it. And then it was the spouse... The woman who went to this um, court of law uh, and made complaint that that woman um, is uh, making sexual advances of her husband, which was not true. She was sending him in astral to harvest her energy in order for them to buy a house, to buy a land, to do all of this for material advantage, basically. It's really madness if, if you st just sit and, and uh, talk to God and uh, you ask to see and you see all of this. It's really uh, madness. Um, and, and that woman had no clue. And she was judged by this uh, court of law, which uh, um, belonged to a secret society. And she was punished. Like she was the guilty one, you know, because they needed to get more of her rights. So they couldn't harvest uh, sexually. So then they uh, uh, created this fake uh, judgment and punishment on her in order to steal her rights. So it's really madness. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry to um, <laughs> burst your bubble, but each and every single one of you is uh, subjected to this. And this is what is keeping you uh, from evolving spiritually because they stole your rights. They stole your rights, which means they attach to your aura darkness, which means you cannot uh, evolve uh, even energetically. Uh, forget about the spiritual fighting and so on. So in all of this, you must claim justice, judgment, and punishment. This is mandatory in order for you to actually, uh, first of all, to learn what has been done, because there is no way for you to learn. People that are so-called enslaved, namely those on which uh, harvesting is being done, they call these people slaves, in case you don't know. Uh, and uh, those individuals are forbidden in astral. This is the first thing I remember that God has shown to me. 
I was asking questions. Why is this? Who sent this demon to me? Who did this? And uh, God has shown to me, you know, that it was um, decided uh, she will never know. She is not allowed to find out. She is not allowed to have astral knowledge in order to learn what was happening. Because, of course, uh, each and every individual, God never sends anyone in 3D without ability to raise in astral. But they take that from you through this stupid, crazy uh, um, courts of law in uh, secret societies which they do judgment on people uh, and uh, they decide to literally to redirect their uh, divine rights, uh, uh, their gifts. Uh, what does it mean that somebody is taking your gift? People say nobody can steal your gifts. Yes, they can. They actually do telepathy in astral uh, during your uh, sleep uh, uh, time, during your dream time, and they work through you on subconscious level. If you have... Uh, uh, a gift of seeing, for example, I have news for all of those who actually have the gift of seeing because they can do telepathy and they can work through you during your sleep time um, to find out the information they need to find out. They can harvest your energy uh, in your sleep, at least in your uh, sleep time, but also in general through many other uh, ways. I have a very, actually I will write a book but I have a very long list of ways in which they harvest energy, steal rights and steal gifts. There are many, many ways in which they succeed to do this. So uh, do not imagine that this is happening to somebody else and is not happening to you. Because this is a practice, uh, very widely pr practiced uh, in the society. And it's, it's an agreement among them. It's not that you are being uh, absolved from this and, and so on. Um, and the fact that you do not know that this is being done to you, it doesn't mean it's not being done. It doesn't mean. And if this wouldn't be done, let me tell you, like I said in a previous video, there will be no need for prophets. And I, would do, I wouldn't have to do these uh, videos and, and to teach about spiritual... Uh, fighting because everyone has this right if you don't see for yourself if you're not able to talk to god and to the divine realm please know that you're subjected to all of these bondages you just don't know it <coughs> this is something important to understand and again uh, the the assignment for the couple it's not always stated out loud now God asked me to be with that individual to come back to the previous video. Uh, I told you that. And then he refused. But then, this is what I want to say because God showed me that I should say this. Um, immediately after he refused, God, and when he started doing those uh, ritualic practices and so on, God warned me. He said, just watch out because now he started doing this uh, and he's taking, actually he said he has no idea what he gets himself into. And uh, he will um, now be too dangerous for you. So watch out for him. Don't, don't accept him. Because God knew that I accepted that only because God told me. So he, of course, warned me when that situation was not valid anymore. Um, and then that individual started attacking me with a lot of uh, uh, ritualic practices, with a lot of darkness on so many levels, even for death to kill me uh, in so many ways, in so many ways. Also with love bombing, with uh, magic sex, and with this uh, crazy lunatic uh, uh, of neighbor of mine next door who's doppelganger, he created her doppelganger, my doppelganger. He actually has been harvesting energy from me and created her with my energy to steal my rights, the two of them together. Okay? So, and he, and he goes to her uh, and, and they do sex magic at me and, and they uh, harvesting and all sorts of stupid things. So, of course, I rejected all of that since God warned me. Uh, and then he started showing to me, God, what has been done. And he started showing to me in order so I'll be able to defend myself and to break the bondage. Because God gave the opportunity to break the bondage together. He refused. Then God shows to you what is hidden. Okay. Um, and he started showing to me, he claimed you 
uh, this time, this long ago, he did this, he did that, because I needed this information in order to defend myself. Okay, of course, God wanted the two of us to break that bondage, but God will never sacrifice me for him. Because uh, I'm not guilty of anything. He created all of it without my knowledge. So, of course, God wouldn't betray me like this. So, he, God started telling me and revealing to me exactly what he has done throughout time against me in this lifetime. I'm not even talking about other lifetimes, okay? Um, and this is how I was able to defend myself and to break the bondage because God has shown to me each and every single thing that they have done against me throughout the time and how uh, he, with her, the two of them, stole... Uh, uh, my uh, divine rights, and they uh, could actually stole money, my inheritance money, uh, in terms of uh, including uh, regarding that uh, bank account which I mentioned, and so on. Uh, so, um, this is something that God wanted me to tell, uh, namely that although He asked me initially to accept that individual. He only did that in order to save him from uh, entering into this um, uh, different type of uh, society which did really bad things in terms of darkness and so on, uh, and meaning that it goes down to murder and uh, blood sacrifice and, and all of that. And um, so since that was not possible, God started revealing to me so I'll be able to break that bondage by myself. Okay, so I did, I did that, so I, I, I carried on the fight on my own, and I broke the bondage against him and all of them together, you know, because he chose the side where to be, God gave him an opportunity, he chose the side where to be, so then I broke the bondage against him um, uh, for each and every single thing that he did. Okay, so I'm going to stop now because it's already uh, over 30 minutes. Uh, Essentially, God, this is what God asked me to do, to come back uh, to the topic and to explain that it's much more broad than that. And some of the assignments are not stated out loud, particularly if you don't have communication directly with God or with the divine realm, and you're just uh, uh, resorting to tarot readers and, and others, um, which is not the ideal situation, uh, because they most of them will betray you. Uh, it's better for you to develop your own skills to talk to God. And in order to do that, you just need to break your bondage. Uh, the one which I just described uh, just now. Um, so some of the situations, uh, it will, will, not, will be different. Uh, the assignment in itself will be implied, will not be obviously stated to you. And you will not be directly requested to do this or that. Um, but you will receive guidance if you ask. Um, and um, again, um, meeting to break a bondage, uh, it doesn't mean that it's got to be for the lifetime. Uh, it means that you are supposed to cross paths. Uh, you can cross paths from a distance, <laughs> like I did with this individual and with many others, in fact. Uh, and, and let me tell you something. Uh, in these situations, uh, I'll, I'll be brief to give you another example. Uh, in 2018, when the surprise attack was launched at me, um, also immediately after, I didn't know what to do. And Jesus told me to go to a certain individual, a bioenergetician. Uh, and I, also, he didn't tell me anything. Um, it, this is very common. And I asked God many times, because it happened to me many times, when God or Jesus will tell me to go to this individual or that individual. And, and I ask, and then to do what there? I go there and I say, what? Uh, and Jesus said, just go there and say you want to find out information. Um, and he didn't give me explanations. He uh, allowed me to go there for a few weeks, three, four weeks, something like this, um, to some classes, Reiki classes. Uh, and in the end, because that was an opportunity, this always is an opportunity for them to come clean. That individual created the 2018 attack at me, you know, uh, uh, and um, basically God and Jesus always has the, have this habit. If somebody has done a harm to you, will take you to them. This is why I'm giving you this example, because maybe you're going to live through it. So you'll understand, because for me, it was really crazy. 
And I said, why you didn't tell me from the beginning? Why you told me to go to this individual? And God said to me, you know, this is why we didn't tell you. Because we knew you and we, you, we knew you're going to start war of them if you know what they did against you. And we just wanted you to be yourself. We didn't want you to uh, react to what they have done. Uh, we wanted you to be the way you are. So if we didn't tell you from the beginning, then when we asked you to go meet them, you were natural. You didn't have any clue what kind of harm they've done to you. On the other hand, they felt very guilty because they knew what they'd done to you and against you, what lies they said, what they stole from you without your knowledge and so on. Uh, but then soon after, God is only taking you to that individual to give him a chance to come clean, basically. This is what I want to say. Uh, to give him a chance to come clean. When that individual refuses to come clean, then God will reveal to you. Or Jesus will... Re In my case, Jesus because he's my guardian. But um, for everybody, it depends who's in your spiritual team. Um, but um, immediately afterwards, God uh, will reveal to you who has done what. That is only one chance that individual receives to come clean and to tell you, look, I made mistakes, I did this, I did that. You know, and to ask for forgiveness. This is what God uh, wants when they take when He takes you to them. Basically, that's the point. Just so you'll understand. Uh, and then later on, you find out. Oh, in fact, I took you there because He did this, and He did that, and He did the other one, and He did this. You know, and then you start the spiritual fighting against the individual. Basically, when God reveals to you, that means that. There are not much chances uh, that uh, the two of you can work it out together. Uh, and God is exposing to you so you can defend yourself. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, I hope this is clear. Uh, so the, the assignment of a couple uh, coming together uh, is, uh, can be in different ways and can come in different ways. Uh, what is most important to understand is that uh, an assignment can be temporary and it doesn't have to be for life. And even if it's temporary, but the two of you actually succeed to surprise God doing a very good job, uh, then God can tailor your mission uh, so the two of you can work together. So it, it can be very flexible. But keep in mind that it might, there might be information of which you are not aware of. Um, and this decision to stay... Uh, in a couple, uh, for always, you should actually uh, consult with God before you make it. Because you never know, and this is my experience, you never know what was actually the truth and who did what against you. Um, and um, I'm going to stop here. I will maybe make another video if God guides me to. But I hope I touched in this video upon all of the issues uh, that God wanted me to. Um, and of course, as always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to comment. Um, I will be happy to answer in the next video. Um, and uh, of course, in the description box below, you find the information for the uh, donations as well, uh, in case you, fe you feel inclined to support my work. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.